Okay, let's have a look at uh, chapter 7, section 2 in the workbook. This is the homework helper over parallel and perpendicular lines. Now, take a look at question 1 for just a moment. In question 1, it's asking you to measure the angles formed by the transversal and the parallel lines, and then they're asking you to figure out which angles seem to be congruent. So for that one, you're going to have to pull out the protractor and actually do some measuring and kind of make some assumptions there to figure out which angles might be congruent. I'll leave that one for you to do on your own. Let's go down to 2 uh, through 7 there. And it's saying in the figure line M is parallel to line N, and you're supposed to find the measure of each angle, and you are supposed to justify your answer. Okay, so um, we're going to go through the different angles here. We may not go through the questions directly in order, but we will figure out what all of the angles equal, even the ones they're not necessarily asking for. As you can see, they're not asking about 3, uh, angle number three there, um, we will take care of that anyway. Notice eight through 13 is a very similar question. It's just they have some different numbers and some different lines marked there. You're gonna use the same basic procedure when you approach questions eight through 13. Okay, so what we see right away is we've got this angle marked 142 degrees and we have this angle that's across from it. Well, as we saw in the previous section, those are vertical angles. So angle two has to have the exact same measure. So angle two is also going to be 142 degrees. So that's my answer to question number three. Now for one and three, the approach would be the same no matter which of the two angles I've already selected I'm gonna work off of. So let's pick the one that was pre-printed there, that 142 and the angle marked number three. Those two together, notice if I use my finger to cover some things up there, together make a straight line or a straight angle. That's going to be 180 degrees by definition. So if I already have 142, how many more would I need to get up to that magic 180 number? Well, of course, I would need 38 degrees more. So angle three is 38 degrees. And again, they didn't ask me for that one, but that is helpful because number one is vertical compared to it. So that one must also measure 38 degrees. And that will be my answer for question number two. Okay, now I've used all of those same ideas that we saw in the previous section to help me work around the top, but I really can't use any of those to transfer to the bottom. I'm going to have to do at least one of those some other way to translate to the bottom. Let's use the most basic idea here of corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are angles that are in the same relative location. For instance, if we look at the one that was pre-printed 142 degrees, it's to the right of the transversal, which is this line marked P that kind of goes diagonally across the page. Notice that keyword there, transversal. That might help you down there in question number 15. It's to the right of the transversal, and it's above a one of the parallel lines. It's above line M. There's another angle that has the same description to the right of the transversal and above one of the parallel lines. And that's angle six. Uh, it's above line N. Notice that uh, those would look to be the same um, if we kind of took and cut across this illustration here and laid one on top of, top of the other, we would kind of see that that 142 and the six kind of look alike. And indeed, it's more than kind of looking alike. They are alike. They are corresponding angles because they are both in the same relative location. So this one is also going to be 142 degrees. And then you can use those ideas that we used around the top now to fill in the bottom. Eight is vertical to it across uh, from that angle, uh, sharing those two different lines, line N and P. So eight is also going to measure 142 degrees and then for five and seven, the concept would be the same no matter which of those two you decide to work with, six or eight. Um, let's go ahead and look at just five and six for a moment. Those two together, if I ignore that line that runs diagonal on the page anyway, um, together would make 180 degrees. If I already have 142, that means I'm missing 38. So five would be 38 degrees, which will fill in the blank for question number four. And number seven will be exactly the same as five because they are 
vertical angles and you could use that same idea of lines that form a straight angle with angle 6 or 8 there and you would still see that 38 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and go down to question 14. In question 14, it's asking me to name all the angles congruent to angle 2. So which angles would have the exact same measure? Well, the first one that should be leaping off the page at you is angle number 4 because 2 and 4 are vertical angles. They are across from each other. Even though they don't give us the measure here, it's not important. All they're asking me is which ones are the same. And those two, indeed, would be the same by the fact simply that they are vertical angles. Now, there are two more answers here. Um, remember, as we saw up here in 2 through 7, there are some that uh, transferred down by the concept of corresponding angles. Angle 2 is above a parallel line and to the right of the transversal. There's another angle that has that same descriptor, and that's 6. It just happens to be above line S instead of line R. So 6 is going to have the same measure. And then because angle 8 would be vertical to 6, it would also have the same measure. And that happens to be the three answers. The other way you can transfer to the bottom is the concept of alternate exterior angles. Angle 2 is outside the parallel lines, which re re is the exterior part of that concept. The alternate would imply opposite sides of the transversal. So what's on the opposite side of the transversal here? Well, that would be 1 or 8. All right, but that's not alternate necessarily um, in that context. 8 is. So 2 and 8 are going to be the same. And I think you could kind of see, again, if we cut this in half and maybe churn this bottom part, you could see that shape lying on top of the part that is on the uh, top side of the illustration there formed by line uh, R and the transversal T. And that's also, again, a good tip-off for question 15.